Hola a todo el mundo, bienvenidos a Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. La última vez cruzamos el puente de Mirdin o Mardin o como se quiera llamar. Y hoy vamos camino de Irtriu. Parece que no va a haber batalla de los leones y las águilas, lo cual también tiene sentido porque Dimitri no está, no está intentando cruzar por territorios de la alianza, con lo que no había forma de hacer esa batalla. Que empiece el mes. Esta vez sé que tendré tiempo de monasterio para mí. Part 2. Crimson Flower. Guardian Moon. The Master Tactician. El Master Tactician, lo han dicho de tal cual, el Master Tactician. Having crushed the Alliance's army and captured the Great Bridge of Murden, the Imperial Army prepares to attack Deirdre, the Alliance's base of operations. Así sin más, nada más que decir. ¡Es mi cumpleaños! Tienes un regalo de Delgar, una carta de Delgar. Oh. Profesor, ¿cuál es tu opinión de Claw? No puedo help but wonder what sort of impression he made on you. Como alguien que se ha pasado Golden Deers, Cloud me genera bastante indiferencia, la verdad. No es mal tipo, no es mala gente, pero me causa bastante indiferencia. Es un intrigante, es un bufón, será un gran soberano, es un bufón. That much is obvious. He acts like a fool, but still manages to make the impossible happen. That's as true now as ever. He's managed to protect the Leicester Alliance with his cunning alone. ¿Cómo lo ha hecho? Since the beginning, territories within the Alliance have been split between those who support the Empire and those who oppose it. Claude has been acting as an intermediary between the two, essentially keeping the Alliance pacified. As both sides are of equal strength, he's created a situation in which they've all agreed to avoid fighting each other and causing undue bloodshed. By carrying on as though the Alliance is united, he's minimized the Empire's influence there. Quite impressive how well his bold scheme has worked out. <coughs> However, he is walking on thin ice. One wrong move and the alliance will shatter. Speaking of Claude, Your Majesty, we should not delay in our invasion of the alliance. It would seem that Claude has some fresh scheme up his sleeve, to no one's surprise. Is that so? Yes. The people of Deirdre have suddenly found it difficult to leave or enter the city. We can safely assume he is preparing for battle, but I am certain his plans extend beyond that as well. Do you not think we should take Deirdre at once? Deirdre, the aquatic capital, a city floating on the ocean certainly poses a challenge. Since it's deep <coughs> within Regan territory, We haven't had the opportunity to attack it directly. However, now that we have control of the Great Bridge of Murden, our situation has changed drastically. They can no longer expand their supply line into the Empire, and so we can finally attack Regan territory. House Regan is not only Claude's house, but also the flagship of those who oppose the Empire within the Alliance. If House Regan falls, the other Alliance Lords will be tripping over themselves to join us. That is why we cannot fail to take Deirdre. Pongámonos en marcha. <coughs> is one thing, Professor, but see to it that you do not underestimate Claude. 
Ah, tranquilo. No lo hago. They say he is unbeatable in a battle of intellect. I hear they call him the Master Tactician. Master Tactician! Pero yo también soy un Master Tactician, estaremos bien. En fin, no parece que haya desvío. Bueno, los que tengo que hacer yo sí, pero. No hay side quests de personajes, no hay conversaciones de apoyo, ¡nos vemos a fin de mes! Parece que a Hahnemann le gustaría hablar contigo. ¿Quieres aceptar? Pardon me, Professor. I became lost in thought, and I do tend to ramble. I suggest we call it a day. Do you concur? Me siento un poco cansada. <coughs> it seems that I have gotten carried away again. My apologies. <coughs> I know you are quite busy. I become so energized around you. When we get deep into the research, why, I feel 20 years younger. That said, perhaps we should discuss things unrelated to crests from time to time. Some sort of silly, light-hearted topic might be nice, eh? Como por ejemplo? I'm not especially skilled at small talk, alas. Let me see. I know. Food. It's not my strong suit, the culinary arts, but I do enjoy a good meal. Which kind of food do you prefer, Professor? Sweet or spicy? Spicy. Spicy? Quite the opposite of me. Yet you're an exception in lots of ways, so it's not altogether surprising. An old colleague of mine theorized that those who bear crests favor sweet flavors over spicy. She suggested that the crest exerts some manner of influence over... Oh, there I go again. How embarrassing. We were supposed to be avoiding talk of crests, weren't we? Terrible habit of mine, finding a way to turn any conversation towards crests. I really should find a way to stop that. No tiene importancia. That is kind of you, Professor. But it's all right. If you were to lose your patience with me, it could have an incalculable impact on my research. That sort of thing has happened in the past, you know. Back when I was still in the Empire. At first, any lady I was spending time with would titter and say she didn't mind if I talked about crests. But at some point, she would always become fed up and stop listening to what I had to say. In the end, invariably, while I was particularly focused on my research, she would write to say we were done. I will do everything I can to keep that from happening this time. Hello, the point of the sube ya estamos en fin de mes, vamos a hacer las conversaciones de apoyo y en el siguiente capítulo haremos la batalla. Oh. It's almost time to depart. Are you ready? Totalmente. A promising answer. Whatever happens, never allow your foe to see any weakness. We must pay close attention not only to Claude's schemes, but to the man himself. He's a master archer who wields the legendary bow, fail not. He won't fall easily. El infalible. It's the relic of House Regan. That bow once belonged to one of the ten elites. Professor, do you know the true story behind the legend? A ver, dímela. Relics were created by the hands of mankind. Saros collected them after killing the ten elites. Saros manipulated the people of the world and defeated the all-powerful King Nemesis. 
No lo había corrompido el poder. That's the history the Church of Celes maintains. In reality, it was little more than a simple dispute. Claro, claro, pero bien que que hizo la tragedia del cañón rojo. Should the one leading the people of the world be someone with humanity or a creature that can merely masquerade as a human at will? Por el que sea más capaz, independientemente de si es humano o no. In the end, Saros was victorious. The Immaculate One and her family then took control of Fulton. Además, piénsalo esto por un segundo, Edelgard. Si los diez élites eran compañeros de Nemesis, Seiros está protegiendo a la gente que tiene emblemas. Si la gente supiese, ¡Hey! Esto, toda esta gente que tiene emblemas, si sí, en realidad eran aliados de Nemesis que causaron la tragedia del Cañón Rojo, habría una cacería de brujas brutal. En fin, Edelgar, que, que no, que no, que no tiene razón. ¡Oh, ¡Es un dragón! ¡No puede liderar a la humanidad! ¡De fiel ahora mismo! ¡Está viniendo a por ti, Edelgar! Exagerada. No me digas que se, es, no me justifique esa Nemesis, Edelgard, que... Estás... Estás haciendo whitewashing en Nemesis, ¿vale? Estás blanqueando lo que hizo Nemesis. Nemesis, que estaba aliado con Slither, que son tus enemigos... ¡Nemesis, no era malo! ¡Fuck you, Edelgard! Oh. Edelgard, cada vez que hablas de esto... Me... Cada vez que hablas me pongo malo. Oh. Oh. It seems they've set out from Garrick Mock, and that's sooner than expected. Losing the Great Bridge of Murden was a serious blow. So is the fact that Teach is still alive. On top of all that, Judith. I told her to run if things look grim. Damn it. So many people will die, and by my call. And what of it? Would you rather turn tail and run back home? Nadir, you're really getting on my nerves. Do you have any idea how much of the Alliance adores me and believes in me? Well, I suppose it's quite a lot. Does that mean that... Yes, the plan is a go. I'm counting on you, Nadir. We'll make a good show taking down those who would assault Deirdre. <laughs> People say our kind may not always win, but we never lose. Let's teach them the real meaning of those words. Now then, let's see what you're made of, Teach. La Gilles me está poniendo malo. Estás defendiendo a Nemesis que estaba aliado con Slither, que son tus enemigos juego. Oh. Ah, vale, no puedo hacer apoyo, sí, aquí están. Como puedes ver, hay unos cuantos. Vamos a empezar. Edelgar con Caspar. What's wrong, Edelgar? Hmm? Why do you ask? You always look at me funny, but right now you're looking at me more normal. <laughs> you can seem rather oblivious, but then you go and shock me with your keen insight. <laughs> oh, that's a little harsh. <coughs> Is it? You only have yourself to blame for the reputation. As for me, I've always thought of you as something of a victim. What is that supposed to mean? I mean, you're a victim of Fodlin's antiquated system of nobility. You're skilled and you work hard, yet you still play second fiddle to your less capable older brother. Even still, you fight on. Not allowing yourself to be discouraged by it all. 
People like you help to fuel my fire. If I can only smash this rotten system, I could save you. You've always got a whole lot to say about your grand plans for the future. Just hear me out. I've realized that I was wrong about you. I can now see that you've found a way to live the life you want to live. Simply put, you love working hard and you love training. You don't know the meaning of surrender. I never thought such a genuine person could really exist. That's a lot to take in. You're not too far off, though. I try to live life the way I want to. I wasn't that way when we first met, but I've changed since then. Nowadays, what you see is what you get. It doesn't matter that you have burdens to bear. Despite that, you never stray from your path. You don't let anything tie you down. I can hardly imagine a life like that. To be honest, I'm a bit jealous. Well, I don't think I could live the way you do, but I admire you for sticking to it. You never let your burdens get you down. You try to push through them instead. If I'm being honest, I changed my mind about you a while back. Is that so? You can be real critical of yourself, and you admit it when you make a mistake. That's true. I certainly make mistakes, but I feel it's important to own up to them. I probably make twice as many mistakes as you, but I don't notice half of them. <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Kaspar. Then again, that's part of how you choose to live as well, isn't it? That it is. But it doesn't change what I promised before. I'm gonna keep fighting for you, Edelgard. Even if we don't live our lives the same way, I'll help cut a path through so you can follow safely behind. <laughs> I don't doubt it. The future is ours, Kaspar. I'm counting on you to help clear the way. Ahí está la patria de la Caspar Subea, Edelgar con Bernadetta. Gardening with you is a lot of fun, Lady Edelgard. I feel the same. You know so much about it, Bernadetta. I looked after flowers a lot back home. I like them. They don't talk, they don't get angry, they don't hit you. And they're sweet. They are sweet. Unlike people, they can all be trusted on sight. You're sweet too, Lady Edelgard. I mean, not sweet, but, um, you know what I mean. You can talk or even get angry all you want. Well, I'll strive to avoid getting angry. You're really kind. I'm less scared of you than I used to be. Most nobles are terrifying. I've had lots of bad experiences with them. But getting the chance to talk to you like this makes me glad I came to the monastery. I'm glad too. You made quite a few friends at the academy, didn't you? I had heard rumors about the reclusive daughter of House Varley, but you're nothing like I imagined. Rumors? About me? Uh, just pretend you didn't hear anything. <laughs> There's no need to be embarrassed. Rumors are meaningless. All that matters is the truth. You're right. I'm not really a recluse now anyway. Not since I came to the monastery. I won't let the rumors bother me. I'm happy to hear it. Actually, I should thank you. Thank me? What for? Wait, do you mean you need to thank me for all the times I've made you mad? You do, don't you? That mind of yours, no, I mean the grateful sort of thanks. Before I met you, I was more prone to anger, but now I've changed in that regard. So, thank you for that. Oh, I suppose you're not listening. Oh, I'm done for! Five years worth of resentment is about to crush down on me all at once! Ah! <sighs> Bernadetta, I'm thanking you, not attacking you. Y se está enfadando. Oh, um, I jumped to conclusions again, didn't I? You did, yes. But don't worry about it. Enough talk, don't you think? 
Let's take care of these sweet little plants. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bernadetta, I hope you'll keep spending time with me. Of course I will. Hey, look. This flower's just about ready to bloom. <laughs> so it is. I can't wait to see its true colors. Bernadetta, que... Edelgard con Doro también tiene con Hanneman, ¿no? Edelgard con Dorotea. Take a look at this. I received it as a gift. It was sent from. I don't remember. Anyway, the point is, Dorothea, when you receive a gift, don't you think you should try to remember who it's from? You're right. That's a little thoughtless of me. What's gotten into you lately? You seem mostly uninterested in the various suitors throwing themselves at you. Is something on your mind? Oh, don't worry about me. Everything's fine. I'm just not that interested in certain men. Do you have any idea why? Well, I do have an inkling. You seem reluctant to tell me. Is it somehow my fault? No, no, nothing like that. Okay, I suppose you're not completely wrong, but... How do you mean? Please, just say what's on your mind. When the two of us are together, talking like this, somehow I don't feel like I care about my troubles with love anymore. So it's fine. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. But it seems we should get to the bottom of such a drastic change. Maybe we can figure it out if we just... Katie, I'm telling you, I'm fine. If you push me any further, I'll write an opera about you. I'll do it right here and now. <laughs> and then I'll sing it in your face. <laughs> Settle down, Dorothea, I can take a hint. If you insist, I'll drop the subject. Whatever you do, don't write more opera lines about me. My cheeks are probably still red from your last performance. <laughs> well, I can't promise anything. But if I try real hard, by the time the war is over, I might just have an opera written starring you. No need to worry, though, Adi. I'll be fabulous as you. A performance they'll rave about for years. <sighs> the frightening part is that I don't know whether you're joking or not. Lo dicen serio. But I do regret to inform you that you won't be playing the role of Edelgard. Why's that? Don't you see? No story about me would be complete without the character of Dorothea. It would be ridiculous for you to play me instead of yourself. Aidy, you really are something special, aren't you? Hi. Edelgar con Hanuman. Hmm. What is on my agenda for this afternoon? Professor Hanuman, may I have a moment of your time? Ah, it's you. Very well. I am quite busy, but if you are here to discuss my crest research, I would be happy to oblige. I'll pass on that offer. I'm just hoping you'll explain something to me. Oh, I doubt if I have anything of particular interest to share. Why did you abandon your noble standing in the Empire? And don't say it was for your crest research. There are institutes for that within the Empire. You could easily have remained a noble and still been able to visit Garrick Monk, or request the cooperation of the Church. Certainly that was an option, but I desired a better research environment. Treasures and holy artifacts reside here that cannot be examined by someone outside the church. I required access to those things, no matter the cost. But surely your noble status would have allowed you greater funding and resources. Even secrets of the kingdom and the alliance would have been easier to obtain as a noble of the empire. What you say is true. I cannot deny that. Both paths have advantages and disadvantages. Hmm. I see you're unwilling to be forthcoming on that topic. I don't know what you mean. 
I've heard that you used to enthusiastically research crests for the Empire. You abandoned the Empire, yet retained your focus on crest research. I just wanted to know why. I feel your suspicions of me are unwarranted. I haven't the time now, but perhaps I will tell you more if the opportunity arises. Huh. Bueno, esto es un apoyo que voy a querer ver. De hecho, quiero ver todos los de Hanneman. Uh... Uh... ¿Y ¿Lo dice ya Hanneman con Lisitea? Sí, dice Hanneman con Lisitea, por eso no estoy haciendo nada aquí. Bueno, uh, se puede trabajar con Hanneman. Tengo tiempo. Siguiente, Hubert con Caspar. You were rather quiet in the last battle, Caspar. Not a single war cry to be heard. It was almost as if you weren't even there. I did it just for you, Hubert. Isn't that what you wanted? Weren't you the one who said my shouting would cause problems? Yes, I was. And at the time, you seemed intent on ignoring my advice. Well, that was then. Recently, my behavior caused trouble, just like you said it would. I was shouting the other day and some enemies heard. I pretty much gave our position away and left us open to attack. I mean, it turned out fine in the end, but someone could have died if things had played out differently. Anyway, I did some self-reflecting and realized that I probably shouldn't shout so much. A decision that I'm proud to say I came to all on my own. <laughs> <laughs> all on your own, huh? It was a bad decision. Being too quiet on the battlefield is extremely dangerous. I'm sorry, what? That's the exact opposite of what you said before! Having seen you fight in silence, I have no choice but to accept the truth that your shouting is vital. What in the world are you talking about? <laughs> We've all grown used to the way you fight. Your battle cries help morale. And your instructions rise above the din of battle. I would go so far as to say that the soldiers under your command would be lost without the guidance of your booming voice. I really don't get you, Hubert. You inspire people. The benefits of your shouting outweigh the risks. Something wrong? Don't get too excited. You'll be ambushed again. Then I guess I'm gonna have to fight some guys while shouting. <laughs> oh, Dios santo, Gaspar, qué puto idiota que eres. In the wrong approach. Ah, oh, well. No cure for stupidity. I suppose I'll just have to rein him in myself. Ay, Gaspar, qué idiota que eres. El nivel de patrón que puede gastar su bebé. Hubert con Bernadetta. <coughs> A summons from Bernadetta. How historic. Um, I've got something to give you. Do you? What is it? A token of apology for all the rude stuff I've said. It's, um, it's only right. I hope this will help you let go of all the grudges you're probably holding against me. There are no grudges, but very well. I'll accept it. You will? Great! Here you go! Some kind of embroidery. A flat lease is certainly lovely, but why give it to me? It seems like something you would send to a female friend or someone you had romantic feelings for. But it's, um... Lovely, you said, right? That's why. If you wear it, maybe you'll look less, um, terrifying. You would like me to wear this? <laughs> you hate it, don't you? I knew it. I knew you'd be angry. Oh, I'm so sorry. <sighs> why not? Do I put it here? Hmm. It really is quite nice. 
I cannot say that it suits me, but... No, it does! It looks great on you! <laughs> hmm. Um, sorry. Nothing else for it, I suppose. I dislike you laughing at me, but it is preferable at least to you fleeing in terror. Therefore, I will wear this when I am around you in the future. Really? You will? I'm so glad. But you're sure? You're really sure? If you're going to question me about it, perhaps I'll change my mind. No, 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 no. I believe you. You're a lot less scary with it on. <laughs> that is what's most important. Now I suppose it is safe for me to return to my usual strict methods. Uh, no, I'm not ready! This again. Ay, Bernadetta. Hubert con Hanuman. Voy a tener que trabajar los zapatos de Hanuman, ¿verdad? It's rather rare for the two of us to see one another with no one else around, isn't it? Yes, I believe it is. I was good friends with your father, you know. Perhaps this is fate, eh? Of course, when I left the Empire, I broke off my friendship with him. And, well, everyone else. You were right to sever ties with such a miserable piece of filth. Sharp words, Hubert. Contemptible though your father may be, he is still your father. Don't overcomplicate it. I will not forgive him. Ever. Contemptible is just the right word for the wretch. Do you truly know what kind of man my father was? I assume you're talking about the insurrection of the Seven. At the time, I was already at Garrick Mark. I know nothing more than hearsay. That said, I found it hard to believe that Lord Vestra would challenge the Emperor like that. Yet that's exactly what he did. Since the dawn of the Adrestian Empire, House Vestra has served House Fresvelg as the Emperor's right hand. My father spat on a legacy of loyalty and devotion that had lasted 1100 years. He conspired with the ministers to usurp power from the Emperor and Lady Edelgard. In your father's defense, the Emperor was attempting to take power from the Seven Houses. The Emperor's reform was an attempt to concentrate power in the hands of the throne. ¿Qué es lo que está haciendo Edelgar, de hecho? The nobles put a stop to that. Emperor Ionius lost the ensuing power struggle. Now it is the nobles' turn to suffer defeat. Her Majesty will crush all who oppose her. You hope she can cease this never-ending conflict? That's quite a goal, Hubert. Ay, el nivel de poder de Hubert es el manso bazo. Linhardt con Bernadetta. I was under the impression you were going to break all of your paintbrushes. <coughs> Cut it out, Linhart. <coughs> I'm just glad you're back to painting. I felt terrible about what happened last time, you know. Because I should have kept my opinions about your painting to myself. <coughs> Maybe you should have. So what do you suppose is the name for this kind of situation? Um, what situation? Am I in your way again? I must be. Okay, let me pack my things and I'll be off. Ugh, no, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about when two people are together, but not together. When they're basically by themselves. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm always alone. Oh, alone? Well, there it is then. I suppose you could say we're alone together. We're each here alone, yet together. So we're alone together. What do you think? Ah. Uh. Alone together? Oh, wait, I get it. That's just a nice way of saying you want to be alone, right? Alone, alone. 
If that's what you mean, I'll go. Please, Bernadetta, you shouldn't go. Being alone together means accomplishing more. We each have the concentration one gets from time alone, but also the thrill of being with someone else. But I find it to be an exhilarating environment. Have you felt that as well? Huh? Me? Um, I'd rather be alone, but when I'm painting, and I know you can see, I worry about what you might point out about it. Is that the thrill you mean? Because I feel that. Here's what I wish to point out about your painting. You've really improved. Your lines are bolder, your color choice is more informed, and your composition as a whole... Did he actually just praise me, Linhart? What's next? A rain of flying pigs? I was just saying what I think. Look, you probably have talent. And you work hard, too. Oh, no. I'm on to you now. You're scheming, but she won't get anywhere by flattering me. Try all you want to get your hooks into my heart. You won't fool me. I'm not sure how praising you means I'm trying to get my hooks into your heart. I have a heart of stone. No one will ever get to it. What a shame. I suppose I'll stop praising you then. Y you will? No, I, I, I didn't mean it that way. You can, um... You can praise me as much as you want! I don't understand you one whit. However, if you want praise, then praise you will get. You're cute. <laughs> don't say stuff like that! El va a poner el ingeniero de Bernadette a su vez. Cuántos que odio, santo que no nos cuantos odio. Vamos a hacer una pausa para comer, ¿os parece? Muy bien. Ya. He tenido tiempo para comer. Sigamos con las conversaciones de apoyo. Linhart con Lysitea. There you are, Lysithia. I've been looking for you. So, I have a hypothesis about your crest. I know you're the one who sent me that anonymous letter. There are things we must discuss. Ugh, it sounded like some bizarre love letter. What? No, of course not. However, I wonder what you would have done if it was. Now I'm just confused and grossed out. I'm sorry, but that is not the overall topic of discussion. Do pay attention. Pay attention to you? As though anything you say is worth <coughs> listening to. It's not like you can tell me anything I don't already know. You don't have a very positive opinion of your crests, do you? That's why you should listen to me. Um... I've dug through all my books, and there's no record of anyone being born with two crests. You are, to be blunt, an impossible occurrence. For you to have a second crest, it must have been forcibly implanted after birth. Is that your theory, then? Yes, it is. To further the theory, if the power exists to implant a crest, then it must be possible to remove one, too. And that is the real issue at hand. I... I could have one removed? That's what Hanneman is working on understanding. I'm helping him with it. Professor Hanneman? Based on your reaction, it seems you want one of your crests removed. I don't think I'd give up having two crests if I were you. Is that so? Even if you've gone through horrifying experiments, endless trauma, and if you knew that all this pain meant you die very, very young? That's what you think? You're completely lacking in empathy, so of course you would make such a crass and foolish assumption. Bueno, eso fue algo. Linhart desde atrás. Caspar con Ané. Wow, Caspar, te faltan un porrón de as. Te faltan todas las as. Caspar, ¿puedo preguntarte algo? Bueno, hola, Ernest. ¿Qué está en tu mente? ¿Hay algo que te pongas particular atención en el campo de batalla? 
stuff you make sure not to mess up. I don't want to make any major mistakes again. So I've been uh -huh. thinking about how I can improve. But it's trickier than I thought. I was hoping you could give me some direction. Nothing I can think of. Sometimes you just gotta mess up. Huh? Really? Nothing at all? Nah, no matter how much you prepare, you're always gonna make mistakes. All you can do is quit worrying and try your best. Hmm, I guess that does sound like something you'd say. But I'm not sure how much use it is to me. That's too bad. It's a great way to live. You worry about messing up, and all that worry makes you nervous, right? So being nervous on the battlefield is the reason you make mistakes you'd never make in training. Well, yes. People's lives are on the line. If I mess up, they might actually die. When I think that my failures might put everyone in danger, I... Ugh, you gotta quit doubting yourself. It's not helping. You're obsessing about failures that haven't even happened. What's the point in that? Sometimes you're gonna mess up no matter how hard you train. That's life. So what you're saying is, I should stop being afraid of failure and just try my hardest on the battlefield, like I do in training. Correcto. Was I not clear on that? You just gotta deal with your mistakes when you make them. <laughs> that really is just like you, Caspar. <coughs> I'm starting to feel stupid for worrying so much. You're so strong and confident. I really like that about you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Annette. I think you're great, too. Okay, I'm gonna try following your example from now on. It's time I stopped moping around here and put everything I've got into training. Right, Caspar? That's the spirit. Let's get out there and train. I'll race you to the stables. Yeah! <laughs> Ay. <coughs> Le la patria Caspar en el sube a verdad está con Dorotea. Hello Burn. Oh no. What did I do this time? Shut up. Not at all. I just want to talk. If you promise not to resort to violence, I'll do whatever you want. Fern, I've just been worried about you. That's all. When I said I was your friend, you ran away, saying something about your father. Remember? Um, vaguely? I know you've lived through some bad times. If you could tell me about it, maybe I could help? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Please. Your father's not here now. Whatever it is, you're safe to tell me. <sighs> All right. My parents told me never to befriend a commoner. They said commoners are scum, and that they'd crush any that tried to come near me. Hang on, scum? They called me, I mean... Commoners, they called us scum? Yeah, but once, a long time ago, I did secretly make friends with one, a boy. When my father found out about him, he disappeared the very next day. I heard he was found beaten half to death, but I never saw him again. Since then, I've been terrified of making friends with anyone, commoners especially. I... I never knew that kind of thing really happened. You hear stories, sure, but... Oh, oh Bern, I'm so sorry. <coughs> I'm proud to be your commoner friend. <laughs> Dorothea! Hey now, relax. There's nothing to bawl about. If your dad tried to beat me up, I'd return the favor and then some. Return the favor? Granizo de meteoritos! When I was in the opera, you better believe I had run-ins with the most wicked, terrible men. I survived kidnappings, attempted murders, all kinds of stuff. But you know what? 
I broke those guys' arms. Snap! <laughs> it was a thank you for all the trouble they went through trying to hurt me. You're incredible, Dorothea. <laughs> so, now that you know I can defend myself, can we be friends, Burn? <gasps> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Esto ha sido muy bonito. Esto ha sido muy bonito. <coughs> Le voy a poner a Dorotea y a su bebé. Dorotea con Petra. <coughs> ¿Qué me Petra, ¿estás haciendo algo? Sí, estoy investigando técnicas útiles para luchar. Siempre intentando ser un mejor luchador. Personalmente, estoy harto de todas las batallas. ¿Estás sentido mal de las batallas? Oh, I understand. Yes, I am also wishing for this war to finish quickly. Sooner the better. Uh, I don't even remember the last time I washed my hair. Yes, it is hard to be braiding your hair when it is damaged from lack of care. Speaking of, you know, I don't think I've seen many braids like yours, Petra. I assume it's a hairstyle from Bridget. May I take a closer look? You may. This style of braiding has been passing, uh, has been passed down through my family. How very elaborate. That must take a long time to do. Your words are delighting me. Braiding it does take up a great amount of time every day. Every day? Now I suppose you couldn't sleep with your hair like that, could you? When there's time, do you think you could teach me? It would be fun to match you every now and then. And once I learn how, I can help you with your hair. What do you think? I am really liking that idea. It would give me great happiness to have our hair match. <laughs> I'd like it too. Dorothea, before I had confusion, I thought you were being overly familiar. But then I gained understanding. Now I am knowing that is how you show your kindness, and I have much precious to me. Petra, what a lovely thing to say. I might just cry. If you will be crying, you can have my, uh, ah, my shoulder for your crying. Oh, I was just playing around. <laughs> But if I ever do need a good cry... I do hope you'll lend me your shoulder. My shoulder will always be available for you. Oh, yeah? So I don't even need to make a reservation or anything? A reservation? For my shoulder? Oh, I just meant... <laughs> sí, de déjalo, Dorotea. No se empana. No se empana. No entiende el idioma del todo. No complique las cosas. What matters is that I enjoy spending time with you. It makes me stop worrying about marriage and status. If that is the truth, then will you be coming to Bridget with me? Huh? When this war is finished, I am wishing for you to be seeing my homeland. You... you are? Oh my. I'd love to, Petra. As soon as the fighting is done, I'd like nothing more than to see Bridget with you. Vale, voy a poner otro Dorotea y Petra sube a... Dorotea con Hanneman. <coughs> Professor Hanneman, how unexpected. Hello, Miss Dorothea. There is something I would like to ask you, should you have a moment. And whatever would that be, Professor? Ah, it's just some rumor I heard about your prejudice against the nobility. You remember when you came to me before, and we talked about how I used to be noble? I was just wondering what your aim was. To clarify, I only hate nobles who are obsessed with their status. You're not that kind of man, Professor. I mean that, really. And it sounds like you never were. I see. But hating nobles obsessed with their status You must have had some terrible experience in the past. Ah, my apologies. That was rather presumptuous. No, it's fine. 
As I'm sure you know, I was a highly praised songstress for a time. Yes. Before I was a singer, though, I was an orphan. And before that, I was the daughter of a noble's maid. My goodness. From an orphan to a renowned songstress. That is quite a life you have led, Miss Dorothea. Well, I don't remember much of my early years. My father was never there, and my mother was driven out of the noble house where she worked. Before long, she fell ill. I was always alone, and I lived in the alleys of the Imperial capital, just trying to survive from one day to the next. I see. Eventually, after I became a singer, I met the nobleman that I think is my father. Oh. He'd had a child with a maid, but the child didn't have a crest. So he threw them both away. Those were his very words. I can't prove that he really was my father, but <laughs> he didn't know who I was. And when he flirted with me, my feelings were something beyond fury. I was dumbfounded. In truth, I felt that way about all of the nobles who flocked around me, yet would just as easily have tossed me away should it better suit them. You have my most heartfelt of apologies, Dorothea. I am afraid my curiosity has opened old wounds. Sadly, it is undeniable that the nobility is full of such terrible people. Perhaps even myself. Professor? Oh, it is nothing. Just lost in a memory of my own. Just know that I will do my part to ensure that you always know kindness in this world. I... Thank you. Ah, por cierto, eh, mientras estaba escuchando esa conversación, eh, el granizo de meteoritos, me acabo de acordar. Uh, Dorotea ya era maga anim... <ríe> Esto es algo que voy a arreglar ahora. Uh, Dorotea ya era maga animista y esto ya le daba el doble de usos de magia anima, con lo que ya tiene dos meteoritos. Gremory no se lo vuelve a doblar, Gremory le da el doble de... Magia blanca con lo que se tienen dos granizos de meteoritos. ¿Cuál es el problema de esto? El problema de esto es que, como vais a poder ver ahora, Gremory tiene menos daño mágico que animista. Sí, aquí podéis ver magia en rojo. 34 baja 32. Pero animista tiene maestría del animismo que da más daño final. Supongo que tiene un mérito por tener... Uno más de movimiento. Pero sí, pierde daño. El caso es que... Gremory. Me he acordado por el granizo de meteoritos. Y decir que iba a tener cuatro meteoritos. Y me acordé, no, es una que tiene cuatro es toro. En fin, anécdotas. ¡Anet con Hanuman! Hay mucha de dust ahí. Parece que nadie ha limpiado en años. No, no podemos dejarlo. Debe ser limpiado. Sí. Miss Annette, if you carry on like that, I dare say the bookshelf shall give out in a few moments' time. Professor Hanneman! <sighs> Thank you so much. There is just so much dust up there. I understand. I had noticed it myself, actually, and was just on my way to get a cloth for it. How about you leave this part to me? Okay. Thank you. No need to thank me. I must admit, I'm rather impressed by your keen dust-spotting eye. <laughs> I just couldn't rest easy thinking that we hadn't finished cleaning in here. I'm quite the same. How anyone can abide dust, even hidden dust. Well, I can't grasp the idea. You and I are like two peas in a pod. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a bit rude of me. We do seem to be similar in a number of ways, yes? 
So I have a spot of advice for you, if you don't mind. Yes? Next time you identify a dusty patch in an inaccessible location, please send for me. That's very kind, but I wouldn't want to bother someone as busy as you. Nonsense. I'm keen to avoid a repeat performance of the tragedy of Miss Annette and the books. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry about that. Right. <laughs> Next time, I'll definitely call for you. Indeed. I would never forgive myself if you managed to pull a whole bookcase over on yourself. I promise that won't happen. Most likely. <laughs> Ah, ya net, es genial. En fin, lo dejaremos aquí por hoy. Eso es cierto, por el Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. El festival infinito de apoyos ya debe estar cerca de su fin porque no quedan tantos. Wow, no pasé mucho tiempo con Ferdinand. Pero sí, el festival de apoyos infinitos no le puede quedar mucho porque no quedan tantos. Y solo estamos en el capítulo 14 ahora. Sí, la ruta de Edelgard es más corta, pero... Quedan dando, mirad a Hubert. Hubert realmente solo queda Ferdinand. Ferdinand ahora me doy cuenta, le faltan un montón de apoyos. Seguramente sea porque como va en Wyvern a solearse el mapa, no tiene mucho tiempo para hacer apoyos, pero no es algo que me preocupe en exceso. En fin, espero que lo estéis disfrutando.